trivia night at one of the bars locally, and our Ooh. our team name was Juggalo Whoop Whoop. Sorry for spoiling a 600 year old story. You fuck. Yeah, my bad, guys. I didn't. You, you are the problem, Giblet. You cannot have nothing. You are bad. There, be free. Never ask me for anything again. Is a meatball sub a sandwich? That starts to stray into the hot dog territory but where I'm looking at it. I'm you like, think a meatball what the sub hell is a hot dog? This? All right, welcome back to Off the Air. Now, last episode, if you remember, we were asked whether or not M&Ms are a candy bar. Mm -hmm. Everyone was pretty, pretty, uh, you know, in the, in the camp of them not being a candy bar. Right? Yeah, I think we can agree um, that they're not candy bars. Pretty agreeable. Uh, is a hot dog a sandwich? Uh, why would you say that? No, I don't think it's a, I yes. don't think it's a why? sandwich. Why not, Noah? I don't think it's a sandwich because in my mind, sandwiches are two slices of bread or two chunks of bread. I will allow it to be two chunks of bread. That have things inside. In my mind, a sandwich is not connected. I will Ooh. allow mm, subs if are you want to call it a sub. I was gonna say, yeah, you got a subway, you got a sub. Oh, sub 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 sandwich? subs are sandwiches. Don't at me. Subs are sandwiches. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is a burger a sandwich? Yes. yes. A burger is okay. a sandwich. What if you were to put a burger on a hot dog bun? Yes. I'm. I'm. I'm firmly in in hot dogs being sandwiches camp. See, I don't. I am as well. I think it's because, firstly, just to just to clarify real quick. No one's going to try and say something idiotic like is a taco a sandwich, right? Tacos kind of are sandwiches, because, but no, the, all right. tacos are not sandwiches. They're distinctly not. They don't have bread. Yeah, they're, they're different. Bread yeah, is they're, they're a different. core ingredient of a sandwich. Mm, disagree. Strong disagree. Strong disagree? Why the hell is that a strong disagree, Dan? Why? Yeah, I think if it's not a tortilla, it's a wrap. I'm going to get real hustle right I'll away. I'll take a wrap. I'll take a wrap. Okay, okay. If you want to incorrectly fine. call it a wrap, that's fine. That's fine. I'll I'll take take that. I think a soft taco is a wrap. I feel like you got your your core, like, let's say your core hand food groups, right? Tacos imply a very specific flavor profile. Wraps, a different one. Sandwiches, a different one, right? This is true, but I think sandwich is such a broad spectrum that it does include things like hot dogs. <laughs> because a burger a is a spectrum, and am, so is a ham, a ham and cheese sandwich. I am more to accept that than that a taco is a sandwich. Yeah, I don't tacos think a taco is a sandwich, but I think a taco is a wrap. I don't know if a I can agree taco. with that either. A hard taco is not a wrap. A soft no, no, taco, hard taco like, soft, obviously not a wrap. Because wraps are made, usually you've got like big flat pieces of like veg and like meat and cheese. Like the cheese might be shredded, but the well, meat I mean, and the usually vegetables like a wrap usually like a are not, chicken wrap. you know? Well, fine, unless it's just, but that's the best way to eat like nasty old like, you know, grocery store chicken, right? If you're not I'm making it yourself. I'm a good old like a deli meat sandwich. Mm-hmm. Well, no, no, I'm going on wraps for a hot second here. <laughs> wraps are big, flat pieces of things rolled together, made mm -hmm. to be done that way. Tacos yeah. and burritos are filled with, like, loose items that without the burrito, they will not be held together. Or without the tortilla, you know? I think a lot of times wrap items are pretty loose. It's, it's not like you roll it all together. It's not like one of those little, like, a... I've like a never had a loose wrap. Usually the wraps that I've had have been, like, larger pieces of things, and then it's cut in half, and there it is. Interesting. A, a pretty tight wrap is, in my experience, kind of a necessity for a wrap. Like, tightly rolled. Yeah, you can tightly roll loose ingredients, though. Well, that's true. But, like, I don't usually see a lot of, like, I've never seen shredded lettuce in a wrap. Mm, I definitely have. Really? Yeah. Interesting. That perplexes me. Not gonna lie. But so, there are... ra wraps are not sandwiches. I, I'm, I'm on that camp. I don't think wraps okay. are sandwiches. Yeah, wraps um, are not sandwiches. Hot dogs, I believe, are. See, but I look at it and I'm like... People say hot dogs are sandwiches, but then I look at like a big like Italian sausage covered in pepper and onion, and I don't look. Uh, I don't sandwich. look at that, and I I don't see a sandwich. They usually call it an Italian sausage sandwich. I hate to break it to you. See, that is a very common use of that. It is a very common use of it, but I don't look at that and I see it's a sandwich. Like if I went to a restaurant and I asked for a salad and they gave me a macaroni salad, I would be very angry. Mm -hmm. It's if the same thing. If I went to somewhere, I was like, "Hey, can I get a, a sandwich?" Dog. And they gave me a hot dog. I'd be angry, but right. I would also be like, "You know what? This is." A sandwich. I will give you the, it reads the criteria. It's just not what I anticipated getting because a hot dog is something you refer to not by a sandwich you refer to as a hot dog. Mm -hmm. Did I, did I, was I on the podcast or was that in, in a regular conversation where I was talking about, there was a meme I saw maybe a week and a half ago, something like that. I don't think I was on the podcast where it was, not it, was on the podcast. it was, um, it was just a guy talking about how his girlfriend and he are play, have been playing a game. Um, and I want to say it was, Metal Gear Solid 2. Oh, salad yeah. or sandwich? There it was. I think it was salad or spaghetti, wasn't it? 
No, it was salad or sandwich. That one, yeah. Or sa- uh, maybe it was. I found salad know. or pasta or something like that. Because I have no idea what you're talking about. Please explain. <laughs> the basic, the, the joke being that there are only like it's one of those oh there are only two food groups kind of thing, and like everything is either I, was sa- I want to say it was like I thought it was like spaghetti or sandwich or something like that. It I was think spaghetti it was is salad a sandwich. or something else. Okay, it was. I think it was sp- salad or spaghetti. Then. No, it would have spaghetti to be a salad, salad right? or sandwich. It would have to be salad or sandwich. Because that doesn't make sense. Because spaghetti and salad spaghetti, are too similar. spaghetti, but a pasta salad with tomato well, sauce. Well, that's exactly it. Yes, and so that was like the that's like the core joke, the the core like meme of it all was that like um it, it the idea being that like you could essentially break any food down into one of two categories, either either salad or or sandwich. And Actually, you could break any food down into any two categories. It was just like sandwich and not sandwich. Well, yeah, exactly. But the joke is funnier if it, the 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 game is more fun if you get to have an argument of like. Is a certain thing A or B like soup, right? Okay, soup pop-tarts. is soup is pop pop tarts are a sandwich in this context. Pop tarts are a sandwich in real life too. Soup soup would be a salad in this context. A pop tart is two pieces of bread with filling in the middle. That's mm-hmm. kind of like a jelly sandwich. Mm-hmm. It is a jelly sandwich. Again, if I were to ask for a sandwich and you give me a pop tart, I would be very angry with you. <laughs> but I think if you if you were to ask me at my core, do I think a pop tart is a sandwich? I think it does meet all the criteria. You know, I, it's, no. like, it's like when no, Plato soup- was like, "Man is a bipedal featherless." whatever behold man yeah bipedal animal with no feathers and they brought up a plucked chicken that's a you know what you got him the Fucking category right. was too loose Fucking but, if you right. stri- if you, but the, the reason it works so well with bread is if you strict if you you know put any more uh, restrictions on what is a sandwich all of a sudden you lose things that are that are sandwiches most eyes, definitely a sandwich like a sub because mm-hmm. if a hot dog isn't a sandwich then the sub isn't either unless you think the sandwich is based solely on the ingredients but then if a hot dog isn't a sandwich a hamburger isn't a sandwich either See, in my mind, for it to be a sandwich, it's a bunch of flat ingredients stacked up between two pieces of bread. Strong disagree, because like... So you don't think subs are sandwiches? Yeah. No, because subs, a lot of places cut their subs in half. I disagree with that. I think it's stupid. But it's a Mm. bunch of flat ingredients stacked up within the bread. That is why... No, they're not flat. But burgers aren't flat either. A hamburger's not flat. They are, though. But hamburgers are flatter, I'll give you. But the top top is is like... is, is. Flat er, but yeah, like they're they're like a little cylinder. No, no, a hot no, dog no, is no, no, no. I don't too. mean you like, just put it sideways. I don't, I don't mean I don't mean like flat, like flattened out wise. I mean like the things put in them are like flat and stacked. You can have meatball my, subs. My, yes, I know. Is a meatball sub? You said subs were a sandwich. Yes. Is a meatball sub a sandwich? That starts to stray into the hot dog territory but where I'm looking at. You think a meatball sub is a hot dog? Is it a hot dog? See, this is why I hate this conversation because this all that ends up great, happening. No, this is amazing no, 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 fucking no, no, no. content. No, you no, shut up. Let me phenomenal. explain real quick. Let me sh- you shut up and let me finish. <laughs> the the, the issue I have with this right. is that like it doesn't matter what I say, right? Yes. Because Correct. both Absolutely of you, right. both of you will just browbeat me down with your own point and like <laughs> have better, have better opinions. You won't even no, you won't even make a point. You'll just sit here and be like. This bitch thinks it's not a sandwich, and that'll be like your whole um, argument. To be fair, and <laughs> my argument when, when you said hot dogs on a sandwich, I went right to the sub debate. You did. You know? I appreciate that because it did make me question all of my beliefs. It, it's true. It really makes you think. <laughs> it really. The first do. time someone asked me if I thought a hot dog was a sandwich, I said no, and I have since changed my ways because the more I thought about it, I was like, you know what? If I am to say a hot dog is not a sandwich, I had to give up a lot of ground on what is the sandwich. Mm-hmm. See, and I'm not willing to give up that much ground. You know, I think I need, there is sacred territory of sandwich and uh, I can't give that up, you know, just for the sake of a hot dog not being categorized as a sandwich. And, and let, See, us so, be cl- let us be oh. clear, in, by this argument, almost anything that you put together between two pieces of bread could be a sandwich. I think anything you put together, if you were to give me a rock between two pieces of bread, that's, that's a, a rock, rock sandwich. sandwich. It's yeah. a very bad sandwich and I would not be happy about mm-hmm. it, but I would say that's a sandwich. And I would, I would be inclined to agree with you, honestly, you know? So... So the original, like, I've seen a lot of people argue this stupid, stupid, stupid argument. And dog sandwich? the big thing that comes down to it is the freaking Earl of Sandwich out here. Anything that he could eat in one hand jammed between two pieces of bread was a sandwich. You can't eat a So a Pop-Tart. You, mm. So because of that, in my mind, a sandwich needs to have two pieces of bread. Whatever you so, want to put in the middle fine if you want to argue that the folded over bread for a hot dog is a sandwich i'm just gonna argue that i don't disagree. think the Earl's sandwich is the be all end all but this fine argument. yeah i would Wait, also what? yeah i would argue what the fuck does the i don't Earl's think sandwich, the sandwich is that important to the argument honestly he is the but, one that invented sandwiches yeah but like, yeah, but a whole like, people invent things that suck look at minecraft yeah, <laughs> yeah i mean there it is look at the the creator of of gif versus jeff like 
Yeah, he's objectively wrong. Yeah, Teslas are cool cars. That's why you but say Elon Musk is a worse, is a terrible person. Off. <laughs> I forgot sorry, that you hate Dan, when I, I say that. <laughs> yeah, I like no. it a little bit. It does sound like a slurry. I feel like you can't say Jife. No, it's that is t- that's like we talked about last week. That's fun. one of those words. Jive that's like you're not allowed to say. I don't know, man. <laughs> Can you come into my Jife even if only for one month? <laughs> 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 God, that was that's an old fucking callback. I respect it. Thank you. Fucking hell, that's very good. That's very very good. What a freaking mess. Man, the cat's got one of those little mice filled with catnip, and she's just going ham on it right now. I good job, Ghibli. Do love cats with catnip. I remember when we first got uh my cat, something like that. I just sniffed the catnip, thinking, "What is it that makes cats so crazy?" And I'm just like sniffing. It, I'm like, it "Smells like oregano." It smells like a minty oregano. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, you, you, uh, you can make catnip into tea, and it's actually not that bad. I can believe that. Yeah, it does know. have like a minty quality. It's in the same family as mint. I've been getting a lot more into tea than I used to. Well, I mean, like, I've always been kind of into tea, but I've, like, started drinking tea all the time. And I did make a very sad revelation recently. What's that? I thought that the mint tea I was drinking was an herbal tea, and I'm like, yeah, nice. No caffeine, everything's cool. I've been drinking it, like, right before bed, living my life. Turns out, it's a uh, it's a mint and black tea blend. So, Oof. like, it's still, it's only, like, a regular amount of caffeine, like, you know, the the 50 to fifty to 80, something like that. Yeah. But no, the, no <laughs> the fact of the matter is, I'm still just sitting here, like, minding my business, drinking this tea far later than I needed to. <laughs> I'm drinking some right now. Oh, no. You dummy. I've opened up every single day drinking this tea, thinking, yeah, it's nice not to be, like, dependent dependent on on caffeine. caffeine." And now here I am drinking (laughs) caffeinated tea every morning, not even realizing it. I've discovered, because I've been drinking, um, I've been been trying to get more into tea because energy drinks are expensive. I've discovered tea makes my stomach hurt. Why? Don't know. Like, like it, like, you know how some people, when they drink coffee, they have to poop? Yeah. It, I, it, very similar to that. Huh. Yeah, no, it's really annoying because I'm like really, I was getting really excited. I'm like, cool. I am, I've been trying to drink, um, it's called Lady Grey Tea. It's, uh, it's a like citrusy, uh, Earl Grey, Earl Grey blend. It's really mm-hmm. good. Um, and I like it a lot and it's, it's something I can actually like drink because I, I don't really like regular ass tea. Like I just, I don't. You know. I don't really like ass tea either. <laughs> uh, oh, I like <laughs> ass tea. I just don't like regular ass tea. It has to be flavored. Gotta get that flavored ass tea. Uh, but this the, the Lady Grey stuff I've been able to drink, you know, pretty easily at work or whatever. And I just, I don't know what it is. I just, for some reason, makes my stomach hurt. Makes me real upset. Because mm-hmm. I was I was real excited to be like, yeah, I, like you, I was real excited to be like, yeah, I'm trying to be a healthier, better human being. And yet here we are. I mean, I still think I'm being healthier, though, because it is unsweetened tea. Like, I'm just drinking, like, plain tea in the morning. And I, I can get behind that. Yeah, that's fair. And, you know, it is life. It does sound like life after all. I guess we all really did have a life of a time. Turns out the real life was the friends we made along the way. In a way, it kind of is, actually. No. Uh, no, actually, no. I'm going to I'm gonna stand by this one. I think, I think, Real I mean, life has nothing to do with friends. I think, I think, no, but living does. Does that make sense? Who's living? That's a weird stance for you to take, my dude. We're all dead now. That's my <sighs> shtick. <laughs> you think we're all dead on the inside yeah fair enough so um yeah we we're gonna talk about pyramid schemes we should probably do that oh yeah let's we, fire we also wanted to talk schemes. about Noah had another thing you want to talk about as well and oh. i'm down for either one whichever one you want to talk about first mine won't take too long because i don't remember noah's because i only took notes about the things that i say that's fair yeah no mine won't take too long it'll just be a quick thing so um if you follow me on social media you will see that i went to go see uh the invisible man um last sunday how did you see or him? a week and a half ago? Well, you have to look really careful. He's got to pay money to see the Invisible Man. Are you kidding me? <laughs> but what yeah, a fool. And I mean, um, the Invisible Man, you know, it's a reboot of, oh, dang, what was it? The 40s? Is it actually like a reboot or is it just another invisible person? Um, well, I mean, because. OK, so from 1933, that's the original Invisible Man. Yeah, it's but based on a book. Wasn't that guy right? like not a bad guy? No, he was a bad guy. He was a bad guy. He was a bad guy. He was a big bastard man. I only remember the Invisible Man from the um, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, one of the greatest movies of all time. It is one of the greatest movies of all time. I don't it's think anyone could argue with that. that. Is, honestly, like if you if you watch it, it's it's so bad. It is it's one of the movies that's so bad it's good. Oh yeah. But when I was when I was a kid, I just thought it was cool. Mm-hmm. 
But yeah. But yeah, no, the Invisible Man's there, and he's not a bad guy. Yeah, he's a good guy in that. But no, in the original, he uh, the serum that he uses to turn invisible drives him crazy. Oh, and he does become oh, a bad, yeah. or he is a bad guy, uh, or descends to a bad guy over the course of the movie. In this one, he's just like a, a bad boyfriend, like he's an abusive, like from what, jerk yeah, head. From what the, yeah, that's kind of what they're going yeah. for. Yeah, yeah. And um, I went to go see that. I haven't seen it yet because uh, you know. Imagine how cool it would be if the se- if like, the reveal was just like, hey, turns out um, there was no Invisible Man. This lady is actually just like crazy. What an M Night yeah. Shyamalan twist. And like the movie just like ends and like no like we found out like she's actually like clinically insane and you know like we you know we're taking care of her and we're like, giving her treatment but yeah like what if there was just like no actual invisible man that's what, what if um, it's the ending and what, the invisible man gets off scot free that ooh, there the it actual is. ending that that probably what, is the actual ending but what that's if my that's prediction. the actual ending but there is no actual invisible man I just think it'd be really funny if it just like straight up wasn't an invisible man it just wasn't. that would be that would be pretty great but if it was actually just like the ravings of a I, I have a point to make I have a point to make go go uh, okay, right, but. The point of that is, you know, this is a remake of an almost 100 year old movie. It is mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. 87 years old, you know, that's too many years, first um, of all, but go off. It's very many years, but it got me thinking, you know, Jackson and I, a few weeks ago, we went to go see Fantasy Island, which was like a reboot kind of of the TV show from the 70s, the early 2000s. I don't know. I'm not as informed on like other genres of film to clarify. Real I've never hot here. seen a movie, but um. Horror was plagued in the early 2000s which they, with a bunch of like cheap digital rehashes of like, you know, old horror movies. The reason I call them digital is because they look so, so digital. They're too clean and they're too sharp and they're just like, they're ugly, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there were just so many of them, like the like House the, of Wax. Uh, I mean, House of Wax was, it was, that was a trip. Uh, and but, then there was um, the the most recent, like the, the final um, night of like the Living Dead movie. Oh yeah, that did, you did, see that? did you see that one? I did not. Like, land, land of the Living Dead or whatever. It I'll, wasn't very good. I'll give that a pass it. because that's like that's a continuation of a series. Maybe a little too late, but like it's a continuation, you know. That that is true. Yeah, it, I, I think I had George Romero as the director. I believe he was behind it. I don't think that's possible because he's been dead for a long time. No, this movie came out in like, two thousand six. That is possible. George Romero has only been dead for a couple years. No, he's been there for oh uh, um anyway though. Yeah. I'm looking up. Yeah, might be him. I don't know. But um yeah, you got stuff like that. But you know, I was thinking like there's a lot of criticism of like twenty seventeen when he died. Okay, twenty oh dang, that's a lot sooner than so I thought it was. Be, I thought he died back in like twenty twelve or something. Whack. Which I guess no, is still be, like within what you were saying. But it, it still was like almost three years ago. So like it, it does tend to feel like longer. Um, but yeah, um, which gets me thinking about like remakes. That's a whole like beast of its own, but requels, the new Halloween movie that came out is a sequel to the first Halloween. None of the other movies count. And it is a new storyline from the first Halloween. And, but isn't Jamie Lee Curtis in it as like, as older. Yep. And so like it's canon that Michael Myers was actually just in jail for like 50 years in this timeline. Yes. Didn't Terminator do something similar? Um, they might have, but Terminator blows chunks, so I didn't want to see anything Ooh, that they came that's out a with. Hot take. He, I love the first right. one. I love the second I, one. I was gonna say you everything can't leave after that. Day. Everything after that is really rough. That's right. What about Rise of the Machines. Anything that the one uh, the one how, moment that gave the entire world a strange, strange feeling, and the lady made her breasts grow. Oh yeah, I forgot yeah, about that, that was like a. Because when that came out, that was in like the mid '90s. That was before anyone was like into this weird stuff. Well, I mean. Before this weird stuff was so accessible. There we go. Yeah. I was going to say. Everyone was still, there's a lot of people into this weird stuff, but it wasn't so readily accessible in the theater. Yeah. In a know? regular movie. Yeah. Like, I, I, I think the original three with Arnold Schwarzenegger are a fine time. The first one being the best. The second mm. one being really, the best. really good. I like the second one more than the first. I would have to watch it again to give a different take than what I'm thinking. It's now. just, it's just it's a, been lot a while. Of fun. But, you know. Sure, they might have done that reboot. I didn't. I didn't catch that. As I said, I'm only involved in the horror field. But uh, you know, like on the requel front, we also have the new Child's Play movie that came out last summer. Yeah, that now, didn't exist. No, here's the problem with that though. Don Mancini, the director of like all the Chucky movies, he's out here. He has an active Chucky franchise right now. Like, yeah, I, I saw. I saw the they, most recent one, like the Cult of the yeah, Chucky. Yeah, Cult of Chucky. It was so dropped. bad. It was terrible. Oh, I mean, it was abhorrent. I, it wasn't good, but I thought it was like it was, fun. It followed the arc of the Chucky movies of getting more ridiculous and more out there. Curse of Chucky was actually just like 
it felt like one of the early 2000s reboot horrors but it still was kind of fun but it's all all these movies have been like directed by the same guy you know he's had his hand on the franchise from day one but then and I also did just get confirmation. I just Googled it. Um, but yeah, George Romero also did. He did do the last line, the land of the dead, which is the final living dead. movie. Okay. So nice. he, did, he did direct that one as well. I right, continue. Sorry. I just didn't want to forget. Um, what do you call half a second? He's directed all of characters. them. Um, do, 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 do. Oh, he wrote the first one and then has directed other ones since then. But the comp, I can't find the name of the company that owns the first one easily. So whoever, whatever company owned the first one, they did not own the other ones. And okay. Don Mancini continued down the line, making the other movies with the new company that now owned Chucky. And this other company decided to come out here and be like, you know what? Uh, we're going to make a sequel to the first Chucky movie or a because remake of it because they can. Everyone objected to it. Um, Don Mancini did not like it. Um, what's his name? Jeez, Brad Dorif did not like it. The voice of Chucky. Like, all these people who have been involved in this series borderline from day one, some of them, like, were against this. But they went and did it anyway because they had the legal right to. And, you know, be that as it may, it's it just got me thinking, like, oh, uh, what do you guys feel about, like, remakes and things like that? You know? Bad. Because I, I, I like some remakes. The new Halloween as a reboot of the franchise... I thought it was amazing. I thought it was a very, very good movie. I thought Fantasy Island, I mean, we talked about it two weeks ago. You guys know that it was, <laughs> it was a whole time, you know? It's terrible. And like... I enjoyed it, but it was bad. And I'm not happy they made it. it and that's take. just like within my genre of movies, we have like polarizing differences between how I feel about it. I don't know that I can like give a solid like thought on how I feel about it. So I kind of would like to hear what you guys have to say. Well, I think horror is definitely the, the genre that receives the most of this. This is this is true. Because if I had like a genre of movies that I I like I watch the most, it's probably like dramas. Mm-hmm. Just like your your sad movies, basically. My cat mm-hmm. has shut my door and is now trying to get out of the door that she just shut. <laughs> Cats do be <laughs> like that. You are a fool, and you will forever suffer as a fool. Okay. What are I you doing? I think that there is a time and a place for it, right? Like I think that any like. I am firmly of the opinion that like, so I, I think I've talked about it before that like, I love remixes. I think remixes are one of the coolest thing that things that like mm-hmm. the music industry does. Um, well-made ones, obviously like there's a difference between like, Oh yeah. Like they're, there's they're, a difference between just a shitty wub step remix and like someone who actually does like some cool new ideas that makes the song borderline better. Mm-hmm. or 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 in same with same with certain cut co- with covers as well like i love like covers in like different styles so for mm-hmm. me a, re- a a remake is kind of the same idea right yeah. i think that it's the exact same idea just brought to movies and i would love to see more more things do it it also like on a like cultural level to me it kind of leans back to the like to like an old like almost bardic kind of idea of like everyone can interact with this thing, but like every single person is going to have a very slightly different story to tell. And that story is what kind of lets the product evolve over time in like a very real way. Um, And I think that there, I wish more companies would allow people to make remakes of things. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that like, like something I I always like would love to see some days would be like a really, like a a new reimagining of like star Wars or something like didn't I would they do like three different versions of that. Well, yes, but I mean, well, that's oh, actually like just, movies. That's actually that one of which came out like two four, months ago. But also, fucking got them. Nice. But like, well, didn't they remake episode four and episode seven? But that, said no, it's different characters this time. That, that, yes, that was. I thought that's the joke you were doing, and I was saying yes. Yeah, that is the joke I was doing. I just I thought you were you were telling me that it was. No, I was saying yeah, this is good. This is a good joke. Okay, okay. okay. But also, episode one is the best. Fair. It's pod racing. It does have pod racing. And spinning, oh, which is a neat racing. trick. Um, what do you want, Jibbut? You shut the door. Why are you looking at me? Yeah, like I, I don't problem? know. I just, I really wish people weren't so up and honest about how much they loved their baby and how much whatever remake ruined their baby because, I don't know, man. Like, I have somebody no special believed feelings in it. towards most remake properties, and I don't dislike remakes because I think they ruin original properties. I'm just bored of them. Like, I don't, I don't care, and I can't be bothered to care. Mm-hmm. But, like, you show me, like, a, a, an interesting movie that's, like, new or based on, like, maybe a book that's never been adapted into film, and, like, you tell me that, like, I can watch that, or I can watch uh, Spider-Man 8, 
this time it's a new Spider-Man though, and they're just calling eight for some reason. Um, I'm not gonna watch Spider-Man eight. I'm gonna go watch, you know, I don't know, like Marriage Story. But That's I also fair. do watch a majority of, like the Oscar bait type movies. It's just like the kind of stuff I enjoy. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it's mostly because although they are admittedly like you, you know the Oscar baity, um, mm. I just th- I think that they're a little bit more interesting than you're just rehashes of eight million Disney properties. I would agree with that. Mm-hmm. I would agree. With I that. just like to see things that are potentially new. I mean, no story is, is essentially new. I mean, it's like the idea of like everything's based on like the six different like varieties of legend that exist, and you know it can only be one of those story formats. Um, but I, I think there's a lot of room for unique concepts and characters to exist in a world in which they don't have to s- stick within the confines of we need to put Michael Myers in front and center. That's fair. And we know, and Michael Myers is bad. We know that. Mm-hmm. Uh, are you sure? Wait, Michael Myers is a bad guy. The the best thing about Michael Myers is like. <laughs> Come on, everything Come on. is explained by just being like no like he's really evil and angry because he's like, evil and angry everyone's like how does anything like this happen how has he broken out of jail 15 times why do they keep letting him do this and like no, no no you don't get it he's really evil and angry <laughs> like i thought you shot him like six times and fell he fell in a hole and then you like shot him six more times and got hit by like a steamroller You're like no no no, no. yes that happened but he's really evil and angry. Oh, dude, you're missing out. There was like a whole thing where they added in this like weird doomsday cult, like the cult of the thorn or something like that. Was that season of the witch? No, no. Season of the witch has nothing to do with Michael. Yeah, nothing that's what at I all. thought. I was just making sure they didn't like time together or something. But yeah, um, they tried to make the a reason for him to be like immortal the way he was because of oh, all this okay. like cult magic. I'm gonna open my door real quick for my cats because they're literally having like a tizzy. Valid. You, you are the problem, Giblet. You cannot have nothing. You are bad. There. Be free. Never ask me for anything again. <laughs> Don't talk to me or my cat ever again. <laughs> I'm back. Welcome back. Both of my cats have now exited my room. There you go. They were very excited. I believe when I it. opened the door, which is something that they can do and do all the time, but they just shut it on themselves and now they're mad. At me. <laughs> Wait, you didn't lock <sighs> them in? I did not lock them in, contrary no, to popular belief. Yeah, the dogs really do be out here locking themselves in. Cats. I've also fed them, contrary to popular belief. Mm, that sounds fake. That sounds like like a plot by the liberal media. It's true. To underfeed cats. Local cat claims he has never once been fed, <laughs> not ever. It's so uh, true, though. It really is, though, which is why it's very funny. What are you doing? Now you're back in the room? You fool. All right, let's, let's not talk about my cats anymore. They only do one trick, and it's being stupid. I, I will. I will say I do agree with Jackson on some level about about remakes. That like, mm-hmm. I was would be tired ni- of them. It would be nice if they were not uh, as unoriginal as they may be. But my dislike of unoriginal remakes is at, is is horror movies. Like uh, to me, that mm-hmm. is the quintessential unoriginal remake. He's right. Uh, but also, you know, I'm gonna have to throw some shade at um like uh, the uh, the most Oscar baby of all companies, which is A24. <laughs> um, because they don't do like the remakes, but they just make every single movie feel exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> like somehow A24 has done things so perfectly that when I watch Lady Bird, I'm like, hmm, this kind of does remind me of Hereditary. Mm-hmm. Because like for whatever reason, they're like, all right, we've got, they've got like the formula, the Oscars formula. Like we just got to do the shots at these angles. We got to make these shots. We got to pace it like this. So all of their movies come out feeling very much the same, even though they're like totally different premises. And speaking of their movies, they are making mm. a, um, a, 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 I don't know what it is for sure, but it's called The Green Knight. And I'm assuming mm. it's about like Gawain and The Green Knight, like that, like Arturian legend. Yeah. Mm. Which would be pretty neat. Yeah. Uh, I'm a sucker. I'm a sucker for Arturian legends, but I also am very wary of them in movies because Me. the only reason companies use them is because they're public domain properties mm-hmm. and they can just immediately attach the name. Yes. But going for The Green Knight gives me a little bit of faith because they didn't just call it like the sword and the stone. Like they could have. Could have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I I don't think most people even, like, I think most people, maybe if you say, like, The Green Knight, they know kind of what it's about, or maybe they've heard the name. But I think people would be like, oh, yeah, you know, The Green Knight, people would be like, oh, yes, the King Arthur-related story Mm -hmm. about his nephew, step-stepson, little cousin, Gawain was something, he was the youngest of the knights, and he was like, I'm gonna cut this guy's head off because he asked me to. Yep. But turns out, mm, shouldn't have done that. Nephew, it says, according to me looking it up. Oh, on he's a nephew. Wikipedia. I knew, I knew he was like a some. He was young. He was the youngest of the knights, and he was related to Arthur somehow. Mm-hmm. What a great story, though, because it really does just. It's just like that. 
it's got that like folk thing to it where like it doesn't make any sense why would you be hanging out with your boys in the castle and have some random man come up who's just like a huge dude with a giant axe and say all right whoever I'm, i'll give anyone the chance to hit me in the head with this axe and i'll give my axe to him if they do it <laughs> like what <laughs> and then people are like i'll do it i mean it was probably why? a pretty sweet axe it was, a, it was a, they do describe it as a pretty sick axe. They're like, you know what? This axe is like real cool. It's real fucking and then, tight. And then they're like, well, I guess the, he like calls them like cowards or something. And he's like, if you, you get one blow and then a year later I get to hit you back. And then he just, spoiler alert. Kills them. Gawain, Gawain, no, 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 he doesn't kill them. Gawain cuts his head off and then takes the axe. He's like, cool, I got a new axe. And then he picks up his head, puts it back on. It's like, gotcha. See you in a year. That's pretty good. And then uh-huh. the story goes from there. It's a good story. It's really cool. There's a, there's a, um, you know, going is presented as like your traditional pure boy, too good for this world, special cinnamon bun. Um, it's, it's a cute, it's a cute tale. Cause he like goes to like the, this castle and they're like the green knight. He, he'll find him up this hill in three days time when the year has come. And he's like, I sick. So what do I do until then? They're like, I oh, you can just hang out here. And then the guy's like, I'm a, I'm gonna head out for the day. Right. But Whatever happens to you today in the castle, you got to do to me when I get back. And Gawain's like, all right, weird, but okay. Walks out, and you know what the, the, the queen tries to do? She tries to get with him. She's like, you want to, you want to, you know, do a little bit of that nasty? And he says, no, thank you, ma'am. You are he's... married, and I respect that too much. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Gives him a little kissaroo. And then the king comes back, and he gives the king a little kissaroo. But I just like the implication that the king was like, oh, we're going to trick this guy into fucking me good. <laughs> it was actually a plot like his wife was on board with him and his wife were in cahoots on this yeah absolutely was, i think that's like how it was supposed to come across because he's like and he just like three times in a row and he's like man he, and he comes back he's like damn i, I <laughs> thought it, i thought that was supposed to be he like he was tra- he thought his wife was cheating on him or something yeah i don't know i think it was like a test yeah i just was like a test. Wanna, he was oh, like, that, that said though like my knob yeah i don't know that that's a great test it's not the greatest I think, test i think it I think he was like, I think he was scheming about it. He was like, this guy's, you know, coming to my castle looking hella thick. And uh, I'm going to see if I can, uh, if I can scheme my way around with him. That's fair. I, that's, that's my, my interpretation of the legend. But then anyway, like it turns out the king was the green knight the whole time. And they were all, it was just a test. And haha, we're all good. I'm not going to cut your head off, Gawain. We're friends now. Ta-da. Sorry for spoiling a 600 year old story. You fuck. Yeah, my bad, guys. I didn't. I know it's just, it's just heavy spoiler territory for the the public domain legend that has been out for hundreds of years. <laughs> <laughs> what if I haven't read it? What then? What then, bitch? Well, then you get it spoiled for you. How could you do this? I thought we were friends. Uh, I mean, my bad. <laughs> Sorry, it's a pretty quick read. It's not. It's not like extensive. And honestly, you don't have to read it. Just go to, like look up the summary on Wikipedia. It's probably faster. Yeah, it's probably like right. six paragraphs. It's it's not a very. It, I think it's one of those where it's kind of like um, Dante's Inferno, where it's just extra. It, it's too wordy for no reason. You can get to the meat of it in like a sentence. Fair enough. I, I, I like the medieval tales though. I like all the the King Arthur tales and the the, the stories. They are pretty dope. I won't lie. To They're you. fun. Yeah. There's something very like I don't want to even say good. That's not the right word. Like almost it just captures almost, like almost a, a cultural nostalgia. Yeah, it just makes you feel like it is. It's, it's just got like a really good world building. I think. Mm-hmm. Like, I think just the idea of, like, Camelot and, like, all the realms around it and, you know, the wizards and the magic and the, the fights. It's just fun. It's just a well, good and time. the fact that they've built on each other for millennia at this point yeah. means that, and like... It's like a whole bunch of treachery, you know? Like, nothing's as it seems, and everybody wants to get the king, even though he's not a bad guy. You know, it's just... Oh, his sister-in-law, stepsister, whatever Morgan Le Fay is to Arthur, she does not does him dirty time and again. It'd be like that. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's unfortunate, really. Epic sword, you know. Tight sword. That sword is fucking yeah. cool. It's very Still cool. Stone and shit. Yeah, I, I, uh, I am a huge fan of, um, if I ever, like, do anything, like, property-wise, it's always, like, borrowing from, if I have to borrow from some, like, historical source, it's gonna be King Arthur. Fair. Good choice, TBH. And especially because there's so many, like, nuances to the mm-hmm. individual things. I'm not gonna go into it too much, um... No King Arthur podcast. I don't want to spoil poor Noah because uh, <laughs> not gonna like Cowboy D and D. I got some Arturian knighthood tidbits in there, like um, lesser known secrets. Because there's a lot of like really cool nuances to the individual places and people uh-huh. that people like, that, that aren't very publicly known. And it's because they've had millennia to build upon this, so there are multiple interpretations. Mm-hmm. Um, 
like uh, like King Arthur didn't even there's several versions where he didn't even find the sword in the stone. It was given to him by the Lady of the Lake. And mm-hmm. there's also a version where he finds the sword in the stone, but the sword of the stone is not Excalibur. The sword in the stone is the sword in the stone that makes him the king, and Excalibur is a different sword that he gets later down the road. Mm-hmm. It's just super cool. Yeah. And there's like and that's just for like one thing. There's more nuances to every other like area, detail, relation between people. Um, just a lot of cool like trickery and a lot of n- neat stuff to draw inspiration from. Big fan. Yeah. Huge fan. Definitely here Again, for it. Spoilers, you know. <laughs> spoilers, yes, for the old Arthurian legends. Big well, you spoilers. can't have that shit being spoiled. No. It's like, you're not, don't really tell anybody what Robin Hood's about. Man, Robin Hood also was, I think Robin Hood is in the exact same camp. Oh, yeah, it, it, it is. It's in its public domain and everything makes movies about it. <laughs> well, that, but also because, like, <laughs> the cultural, like, understanding of it all. It's true. I do like the one meme that's been circulating that's like a Robin Hood. He's like, here you go, my poor friend. I've taken all this man's money and now it's yours. And the guy's like, I'm rich. And he's like, you're what? Fucking. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, I, I'll give you that. I'll, that's I very it. good. That's a it's a, it's a, it's a nice little nice little spicy meme. I've seen it on like three different platforms. I've seen it Twitter, Tumblr, and Facebook. So you know it's making the rounds. It's a very good one. I think it it's is. a Tumblr post. I think it's been screenshot and put on Twitter and Facebook. Sure, that uh, sounds right. right. That's how a lot of things are. Mm-hmm. But there's also a lot of tweets put under Tumblr. It's very strange that like all big social media platforms heavily draw from one another. Mm-hmm. Like there's so many like screenshotted tweets and Instagram posts on Tumblr, and so many screenshotted Tumblr posts on like Facebook. It's insane. It's wild. It, it do be like that. I remember seeing a, um, what do you call, it was uh, a chart of the internet and it showed like at the top was like 4chan and Tumblr and then everything down below that was screenshots Mm. of either Reddit stealing a story from 4chan or screenshots from Tumblr making the rounds around things and being (laughs) reworded to new tweets and things like that. And it's like, yeah, I guess that's true. No, it'd be like that. No, 100%. Because, I mean, I'm going to be honest. I find Tumblr to be very, very funny. But you know what? Funny Tumblr doesn't always come across my dash. It does a lot more now that I follow Jackson, of course. It's true. It's the best Tumblr to follow. But, you know, you don't find that, like, flavor of funny Tumblr all the time. Same with Twitter. I don't follow all these people that, like, have viral tweets. I don't, Yeah, I feel like the problem with Twitter is, like, you can monetize it. Mm-hmm. And the problem with Facebook mm-hmm. and Instagram is that you can monetize it. You can't monetize Tumblr. Like, no. W- and the same with like Tumblr and 4chan. You can't mon- monetize them. You can't be like, I'm going to make money from my Tumblr posts. Um, God, can you imagine you can't you monetize, monetize Reddit either, 4chan? but Reddit is also like kind of difficult to be. Reddit is not really comedy based for the most part. If it is, the comedy is typically done in like the form of like pictures or screenshots, most of which are taken from other sites. Reddit's more information on terms of like the things that actually provide value to the community around it. Mm-hmm. Um, but Tumblr and 4chan, like, you can't monetize them. So anything that's comedic is genuinely coming from the heart, and it reduces the ability for individuals to have a majority share of the content. Unfortunately, so like, it also means you've that... You've got your Twitter accounts, like dudes like Caucasian James, who tweeted like three funny things ever, and then just tweets out the same kind of thing ten times a day, hoping one day he'll strike gold, mm-hmm. uh, and then has sponsorship deals on the side. And like you've got like uh, um, like your, your Instagram accounts that are just like, they share a meme, and then there's like a giant like paragraph about some pyramid scheme product they want you to buy into which we're going to talk about next but first let me finish this rant and uh yeah the the, the inability to monetize i think creates an interesting situation where the people are doing it out of some weird desire to Mm -hmm. even though they're not getting any reward which is the most pure uh, of ways i mean in both cases it's that social recognition is the only like and granted that is that is a very 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 real thing Mm mm-hmm but yeah, no, 100% agree that like the, it's it's weird. It's a very interesting uh, world that we live in. That these are both things that are extremely popular. Yep. Yeah, but I, I don't know. I, I like that's one, that's one thing that keeps me on Tumblr is like the fact that I know that like the people I'm following are not exploiting like anything to try and make money. They're just like genuinely like idiots who are saying these things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it just, you know, it gives you like a little bit of a, an extra laugh just being able to see. The fact that these people don't do it for any discernible reason. No, it's it's for the love of for the love of the art or whatever. For the love of the art, <laughs> if you can call it art. Well, I think you could definitely call it art. I think you honestly can. Like, there's there's so many funny things on Tumblr. Uh, like 4chan too. 4chan's a little bit more obtuse to use, and I usually typically use Tumblr on my phone, so mm-hmm. 4chan's not really as accessible to me. Um, it's also just like not that convenient to browse unless you're browsing it like twenty four seven, because you can get lost pretty easily if you're not paying attention for a little while. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's one of the things that I'm like, I'm just not a fan of it. It's well, it's because I mean, it, it, that's ugh. one of the reasons I'm not a fan. Yeah, I should say there I are mean, several reasons I'm not a fan. 
I'm not. Oh, a fan. Yeah, it's got it's got a terrible dark side. No, yeah. Um, the, I, the, here's the thing. For me, it feels like the dark side isn't like in the same way that like Reddit's dark side really isn't that isn't that far down. Yeah, but that's Reddit's dark side. Well, but like I think 4chan is even less buried. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like 4chan is like yeah, right up like against the fucking it. service. I hear a lot of people trying to make the argument that 4chan is out here. Um, damn it, Jackson. <laughs> You totally killed my concentration with that picture of CeeLo Green. <laughs> Thanks, I got more. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm removing that. <clears throat> Good luck. I feel like the thing with 4chan is that, like, I hear a lot of people making the argument that there's a lot of good content on 4chan. You just have to stay away from, like, <laughs> I don't think there's a lot of good boards, content. right? But yeah. I feel like the way people like the way people talk on 4chan, the way their communication is built, they have like their own language and everything. And it's, it, yeah, it's, it's so inherently offensive. Wasn't 4chan you know? down for a while? Or was that 8chan that went down for a while? That was 8chan. That got shut down. <laughs> the were, thing that's funny to me about like 4chan and like incredibly powerful. I read like a, like this mini like um, essay kind of thing on it this morning when I was actually just like chilling out in between classes. Um, it was just talking about like the way that 4chan operates and is able to do these like really weird and the impressive things like they're able to like break into like all sorts of stuff. And it's like always like individuals working together for their own purposes. So they've, they've got things like they've gotten like the FBI's website before and they do like all sorts of messed up things. And they like find all this information. Uh, like when they found Shia LaBeouf's fa- flag by mm-hmm. um, looking at the constellation patterns, as well as like the way that the, uh, the planes were flying overhead and they found it within one day. Yeah. Like the ability to geolocate, geolocate to that level is so incredible to me. And the fact that there's like a, a, a section of people on the internet who are individually capable of this kind of thing, but they're also just like, eh, to the degree where they just sit on the line on forums and just like say really offensive things to one another all day. Mm-hmm. It's just so strange to me. Oh, it's a very strange world. There's a whole bunch of men on the internet who post frogs all day that are capable of incredible feats that they will not use to aid the government in any way. And I think there's something funny about that i i, I kind of like it i think I I'm, not, I'm not involved in it myself but i i, I, I like 4chan i think 4chan has a lot of interesting potential and ability to do things but obviously you know there's all with that kind of um ability there comes a certain uh, personality disorder you could say and there's a lot of uh interesting characters mm-hmm. tg is really there. good i like tg i don't know traditional gaming is. oh it's D and shit they're, they're t- fits, the, pre- fits see, pretty good. Fits pretty good. I'll give you that. <laughs> Mostly just because it's funny. And uh-huh. there's actually genuinely good fitness advice on there. Yeah. I but, feel like. See, I don't know. You're, it's very easy to throw out the couple of things that you like on it. Yeah, but, but there's a whole lot of the uh, site that I is just like a, a majority trash pile. Yeah, it, yeah, even yeah. Like in the positive good boards, there are ways that it gets just derailed real hard into like. Mm hmm weird porn land and, and there's a lot of like really dangerous political opinions on there as well yes uh, like wrong, definitely what's, wrong does. With, what's wrong with weird porn land sorry i missed that that's a good thing yeah uh, but yeah, no, the fact that it does thing. within that um echo chamber it does facilitate extremist views much like the alt-right is heavily perpetrated by 4chan users mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. but that's not like I mean, that's not everyone on there um and, hashtag you know, not a lot all 4chan users people. no um, no we can but, lump yeah. them all together we can absolutely and lump them all together because they can individually defend site. themselves. Mm. Yeah. Because it's really easy to see the individual defenders, whether or not they actually do a line and they're just being like, no, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's, it's a very, it's an area I don't spend any time at all and I haven't in years. Um, but it's just, it's a very interesting subsection of the internet to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I would agree. It's because a very... it's not hidden. It's not like deep web. It's not secret. It's, incredibly public and open and you can just go look at it mm-hmm. and you can just go be involved with it yeah and that's strange but speaking of things that you can be involved with that you shouldn't be let's talk about pyramid schemes nice this is a solid transition. Thank you. i like that thank you, thank you. Mm-hmm. and audible mm-hmm. is audible a pyramid scheme no it's just good and you can get a free month trial if you go to audibletrial.com forward slash off the air really you have any new books to recommend yeah uh, i've never once read a book I just finished up my the book I was reading or listening to, um, mm-hmm. Understanding the Dark was Side of Human. No, although I actually did that did get recommended to me today, and I was really tempted to use my credit to pick it up. Uh, it's it's gonna be like a sixty hour read. Yeah, but like that's, <laughs> that's 60 a big hours, commitment. That's sixty hours of me getting to listen to a book, like objectively from everything I've ever that's, heard, a really good. That book. That is true, but I feel like I would get very confused if I were to try and read listen to Duna's book. Uh, that's yeah, I think that's it's fine. too long. I'd forget about it. Like, uh-huh. I'd forget things as they were as I was listening. Never. 
I think I think like a ten hour audiobook is ideal. Five mm. is like perfect. Mm. Strong disagree. I thirty. A solid thirty hour audiobook gives me basically an entire week of content to listen to. Ah, uh, I forget that you like fantasy literature, which is thirty hours individually. Mm-hmm. I don't have the heart for it. That's fair. I no, read, super I read fair. Your, 90 page novellas that are three hours long. Says no, the man who's read fair. through the uh, Game of Thrones books, but go off. I did, yes. <laughs> it's a different time in my life. I had more free time. Actually, I didn't you know have what? more free time. I had less really free fair. time. I had less free time, but more commitment to reading things like Game of Thrones. I respect it. But you can just, you can crunch through more small books. But if you get one token a month, you might as well use it for a 60 hour novel. It's true. I think the longest audiobook I have in my collection is uh, American Gods. Ooh, I haven't mean to... Which I listened to like two hours of, and I have a physical copy, and I was reading alongside with it, and like my uh, um, data cut out or whatever, like I went into like a no data mm-hmm. zone, so it stopped like um, playing, and I just started reading, and I got like lost, and I couldn't sync them back up, and I just read the rest. I read like half of the book, and I stopped. Uh, I really need to Fair read enough. that at some point. I've heard it's very good. It was pretty neat. Uh, it wasn't really for me, personally, but oh, it, well. it has a lot of interesting themes. Fair enough. Um, cool, cool enough characters. Fun stuff happening. But yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't a. I didn't. I didn't. It didn't vibe with me too hard. I didn't get too into it. I heard the show was a good ap- adaptation. I have also heard that. Yeah, I heard it's pretty, pretty, pretty faithful. Yeah, I've mm-hmm. heard it's pretty solid. Um, which it's being done by stars, which gives me like some some hope because I know like networks like that typically are less about making a fifteen season show and more about just like finishing the show. Mm-hmm. Um, like stars isn't going to be like we need to push this for sixteen seasons and make it the next supernatural. They're just gonna be like, yeah, let's just end it. The book ends here. Let's end it here too. Pyramid schemes. Don't like them. Do you guys know anybody? Do you guys have any like anyone that you were close with? At have any we talked point about this on the podcast before? Seller? Uh, I think you may have mentioned your family had been yes. involved with one. Mm-hmm. Is, is some people tried, oh, some people still. did try mm-hmm. to recruit me. I know I mentioned that. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, the Amway. That's a, mm-hmm. That's yeah, what I'm trying to now. What, what do they do? Let me look into this real quick. Their, act, their energy familiar. drink is pretty good. This Chill. is not an endorsement in any way, shape, or form. Chill. Hell of beauty and home care. So this is they just they sell all sorts of stuff. Mm-hmm. Definitely going to Wikipedia page and not their actual website because I want information. You want information, not advertising. Oh, 1959. They've been around for a long time. Mm-hmm. Let's see. I I the only thing I ever drank a bunch of from the, or had a bunch of from them was their energy drink. That was it. The owner of uh, Amway also uh, was the owner of the Orlando Magic, which is hmm. um, and he wouldn't he couldn't buy an MLB expansion into Orlando, so he just bought the Magic instead. It's basketball. Ah, uh, interesting. Yeah, he bought several different sports franchises, three different hockey teams, and the Orlando Magic. <laughs> Wild. I don't know. I'm. <sighs> A lot of people so around weird. here so weird to me. used to be into LuLaRoe in a big way, too. I didn't encounter anybody who was into it, but I, I know, I, I've heard a lot of bad things about that one. Yeah. Um, my, um, one of my, uh, one of the guys who works at the uh, company my retirement fund got set up through told mm-hmm. me about how his, uh, his wife used to be really big into it back when it was like at its peak. And he said that, you know, it was great that she got into it then. He's glad that she did. Uh, she did very well, but she was on her computer, you know, like 80 plus hours a week, man, like making sure everything kept going and like flowing properly. Yeah, they're really. And they also apparently when they first started, they weren't um, really like a pyramid scheme. When they first started, apparently they were actually like a company that sold things from houses. Mm-hmm. Like it, it wasn't actually like a recruiting thing. Like you literally would just like sell clothes to people from home. Mm-hmm. And then it, like it became a recruiting thing after a couple years. Yeah. But yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it didn't, it wasn't always as bad as it is now. I'm sure uh, it wasn't. Again, I don't know for sure. I haven't done any like hardcore research in this or anything. I think I watched like the Vice documentary on it, which was kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the thing I love about Vice. Like Vice, <laughs> they've got like actually like this pretty interesting like uh, blurbs that they'll do about things like uh, pyramid schemes and the damage they cause. And they also just have like a thing that's like, we had this guy sit in a dark room and do DMT for six days straight. And you're like, oh, thanks Vice. Very interesting. Cool read. Yeah, I don't know. They, they got some, some weird, weird stuff going on over at Vice. Thanks Vice. Yeah, you're very cool. It's very controversial. A lot of people hate them. Um, but I think they're not really doing like the type of like media journalism that's supposed to be like in, insane and like deep diving. I think mm-hmm. they really are more of like a meme kind of site where they're just talking about like I love that. stuff yeah. that applies to young people. Yeah. Um, I, and again, I, that, I don't have like a super deep knowledge of vice. I've just seen like some of their YouTube videos basically. Um, and it never really came across something to me that was intentionally, um, like misleading or ill-informed and rather it just seems kind of like, oh, I would... uh, you know, just clowning. 
Yeah, I feel like they just really just kind of go out and do their thing. and Yeah, like they have that one guy who like does, he goes to like the lowest rated things in like the, in New York City mm-hmm. and does like reviews of them and like talks to the owners. It and, just reminds me of like the, uh, the BuzzFeed price point videos. They may be dumb, but they're not actively hurting anyone. Sometimes they're fun and sometimes you Precisely. learn neat things. I feel like Vice falls into a very similar thing. Like where else am I going to find people? That are out here going to uh going to like the gathering of the juggalos to interview all of the juggalos and just be like, Yeah, so uh, you know, um, what's going on? We <laughs> are doing of, that, don't I you mean, remember? Outside of us. Okay. Dan, we, we you weren't on that episode, right? We hid that from you, didn't we? This does not oh, sound I, like a thing I would oh, agree yeah, to. He was we not hid this from Dan, yes. Oh Dan, yeah, um, we're going to uh we're, we're gonna, gonna go all to go to the, the gathering of juggalos. juggalos together well why don't you want to, to? Go? you know the answer to that dan come on yeah, we could I go together that is not a selling point think about how much fun it would be to go to the gathering of the juggalos just you me jackson and a whole, and bunch, a of whole bunch of juggalos <laughs> <laughs> i don't like it i'm gonna be honest with you not a, not here for this oh i think uh the the crux of the, the going to the gathering of the juggalos is i was going to try and convince um large swaths of juggalos to become communists oh that was it no was, dan, uh, you were here just, for that we were here to familiar. talk about how, but because well, we were talking about basically how juggalos are already really close to communists, they just don't know it. Mm-hmm. And, and I think you could probably just like go there with a little bit of material and just tip them over the edge. I, See, I think my, I think we uh, could reach the tipping point. I think it'd be super funny. I <laughs> think it would be really funny to find out like what juggalos are confusingly staunch Republicans if you went and did that. Because I'm sure oh, yeah, you find sure. a lot. Do you be surprised? The like the juggalo like community is super like anti like bigotry and racism, mm-hmm. uh, transphobia and homophobia. Um, now obviously individual members aren't always indicative of the larger culture. Oh yeah. But most of them, like, uh, a lot of the people are really pro um, the individuals being themselves. Mm-hmm. Pro Which not is, being a garbage you know, monster. Yeah, I, I mean. To be fair, there's not a lot of people who, not a lot of groups that are like that. That's fair. And the Juggalos are one of them. And I think we could get the Juggalos. And the reason why I think the, the communist thing came up is because they were like, um, basically, if you're a good Juggalo, you're in, right? Yeah. Like if you're, if, even if you're not, but you're curious and you want to know more about it, you're totally accepted. And that's kind of like the ideas of communism. It's like if you're a good party member, you're, you got the in. That supersedes all other individual aspects of yourself. Yeah. So the juggalo is the core, and those who identify with it and are um, positive towards it are accepted, no matter who, what else they've got going on. <laughs> and I and I think that there's some some uh, some converting to be done there. I think it'd be very funny. I can't disagree with you. It would be very funny. So very very fun. I feel like you could get a lot, of, a lot of jugglers to be very excited and agree with you, but I feel like you couldn't get an actual enacted long-term change in many at all. No, I think I think expecting... I feel like most of them would be like, yeah, whoop, whoop. Mm-hmm. And that's half the battle. Is it? What's in there? Yeah, getting, the, uh, getting them to actually stick with it. But the first half is getting them to go whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop. Oh, whoop, did whoop. I, t- I don't think I told you guys this. Uh, we juggle? went for um, Jeff's wife. It was her birthday, you know, and we My went wife. out and did a trivia night at one of the bars locally. And our, our team name was Juggalo Whoop Whoop. So we actually were, we did get second place and, um, L. I know we, we lost to this guy named Trivia Newton, John, who just destroyed everything. But, Any relation to Fig Newton? Um, uh, possibly. You never know. But if you it's were probably. the first person to put your answer in and you were correct, then you got a shout out. So, uh, we got like four or five of them where the guy said, and the fastest one was Juggalo Whoop Whoop. <laughs> And once, he gotcha. once we started ranking very consistently in the top four, he said juggalo whoop whoop. And we went whoop whoop, which was alternately some of the most fun and the biggest embarrassing thing I've done in a long time. That I would never be ashamed. Brand. It was to be a juggalo. It was so good. So not juggalo related, but kind of related to the idea of surviving within a society. Um, <clears throat> how do you guys think you would do on a reality TV show? Bad. Are you kidding me? I think you'd do good. Very, very bad. No, nah, Dan, you would do fantastic. You are inherently mischievous, and I think that you could market that and become the heel. I think you could do all right, because you're mischievous, and the fact that you think you're going to be really bad at it makes you not a threat, so people won't target you in like the first week. Yeah. Here's my now, You're not going out in week one in Big Brother. What? Here's my counterpoint. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I would do not have the patience for it. That's true. It does take several weeks, usually. Months well, I mean, cases. like, for the people more than anything. Yeah, I mean, but you still have to be around for like several months. Well, yes, but... Form your fake alliances and whatnot. Noah, how do you think you'd do? I think I would have a blast with it. I think you'd do pretty good. I think you're, again, you're not like 
inherently threatening. Like you're very likable, amicable. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I, th I think that's like the worst case scenario is you come in as a threat. Nobody likes a threat. Mm -hmm. I would agree. Um, we, um, just got finished over here watching hell's kitchen season two or season is three. Is that a reality show? Huh? It is. Is that a reality show? It I is. thought it was like a, I thought Gordon Ramsay went to a restaurant and was mad at them. No, that's, that's, um, that's kitchen nightmares. Mm. I know they're very, oh. very similar names, but no, yeah, it's um, technically it's it claims to be an unscripted reality show. There are is definitely like some a, scripted it, moments. Is it a reality show in that like people like form alliances and stuff like Big Brother style, or like do they get eliminated every week if they don't eliminated? Like, um, someone gets eliminated okay. weekly. But like Gordon Ramsay chooses not the players. No, the players nominate two people from their team, Ooh. whatever team loses, and oh, that okay. relies heavily on some alliances. There's the guys versus yeah. the girls. And it goes on down yeah, yeah. the line until you get to your final people where there it's just like a mad dash cook off where Gordon ends up choosing down to the last like two people. That sounds like way more fun than I thought House Kitchen was. I thought it was the one where he yelled at restaurants. No, it's I think it's a good time. You can't realistically it is not fun to sit there and watch episode after episode after episode. Like after you watch like maybe a season and a half, you do start to burn out because everything's kind of the same. Okay. But I find it to be a fun show. It's my um it's my favorite turn my brain off and just kind of like veg in the evening show. Yeah. It's a good time. Michelle, for a while, Michelle and, I, Michelle and I were watching um, Next in Fashion, which is uh -huh. a sim, like, okay. it's another reality show, but it's all fashion based, which Michelle is super into because she was, went to New York Fashion Week for a while. Oh, yeah. Um, and yeah, that just finished up. And yeah, no, I totally get the shut your brain off for a while. And it's one of the, it's, I liked America's Next Top Model back in the day. I used to love that show. Ooh, solid call. But that was less reality show. That was more like just genuinely competition, you know? Mm -hmm. See, cause like they I, all come across with, when there's a judge, when there's judges, like a panel of judges, to me, it kind of loses like the flair. Yeah. I think Big Brother stands out as like the most exciting reality show because there is no outside influence. It's mm -hmm. literally just people locked in a house and they choose who stays and who goes. Yeah. So like, I, there's so much like meta meta gaming and stuff. I'm a huge. I, 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 I'm not a fan of reality shows in theory, right? Yeah. And yet, and yet, I feel like it's impossible to watch a show for two, for a certain for any length of time and not pick favorites. You know? Oh, no. I I love reality shows. Oh, honestly, like, see, I I don't like. When I say reality shows, mm -hmm. I don't want to. I don't mean like keeping with the Kardashians and no. things like that. Yeah, no. I mean like reality show competitions. Say, where I was about to clarify, I love reality. competition reality shows, not like because slice of life game. reality shows. Yeah, it's like it's exclusively a game. Like it's it's one of those where like I don't watch Big Brother and think that guy's a bad person. Like mm -hmm. if you screw over everyone else in the house in Big Brother, I think it's hilarious and I like it. Yeah, because no one's no one's actually getting hurt. The only thing they might be doing is losing their chance at the money. Yeah, but like you're not ruining someone's social life at home. No. Um, no. Um, with very few exceptions, there are some people who like like are outed for like, doing bad things or like who like freak out and, like uh, get kicked out of the house for like doing like you know crime stuff. Um, but like for the most part, if you're just like alliancing with somebody and you backstab your who they thought they thought you were your fr their friend, it's fun. It's 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 all it's all game. It's all silly. why you have to be made. Why you have to be made. And like, but there at the same time there are stakes because there is like you know five hundred thousand dollars online. Yeah. So it's kind of like it's not a. It doesn't. It does matter in the sense of the game, but the person is fine. Yeah. So I like I like that element. I think it, it makes it so it makes it fun to watch. See the thing I like Without about like, it, like Hell's scary, Kitchen specifically. Like I love competition cooking shows, and the mm -hmm. fact that I get like just a fun slice of like stupid drama to add on top of that. It's just like you know it's. It's the perfect blend sometimes of just like, yeah, this is just kind of what I want right now, you know? Yeah, because it's like, I sure, I made a terrible rack of lamb, but I thought Naomi wouldn't put me up on the block. I thought she trusted me. I thought we were a team. Exactly. Oh, oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. The backstab, the also, back doors and the backstabs, I live for them. There is someone on YouTube that uploads like full episodes of all of the um hell's kitchen episodes king yeah you can like he's out here like uploading uh hell's kitchen kitchen nightmares and one of his other angry cooking shows oh that's just gordon ramsay <laughs> <laughs> it would be really funny because the, the, i don't think that man is uh that down with the uh with the times like that but hey the capital cpt i think you would be surprised <laughs> actually i still uh, feel like gordon ramsay actually has would be much more down with everything than you think I if you want to find out what Gordon Ramsay has to say about that, tune in the next episode of The Off Air, because that's right, he's going to be here. <laughs> no? <laughs> no, he's not. No, he, oh, you didn't get Gordon? I thought you got Gordon. No, man. Sorry, I, man. Listen, I told you I, I wasn't going to be the one to get Gordon. That was supposed to be your job. Well, we don't have enough money for a little milk, so how are we going to get... Who else <laughs> Hello, man. We might, have to, we might have to have other guests on the podcast. Couldn't be. You think Gordon would do it for the exposure? <laughs> I don't think he would. <laughs> we'll have to scrape up some money and try and get a guest on here. Do you think Gordon would do it as a charity case? No. No. <laughs> 
What if I say that I'm very sick and sad? Then you would just be telling Gordon Ramsay the truth. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I got also, him. Like, ladies and gentlemen, we got him. My, my heart. It will go on. No, it won't. Shoot. in my dreams. Heart machine broke. Ooh, did that did not come? No, no, no. Don't whistle into your microphone. Yeah, no, your, your whistle didn't really turn out as well as you think it might have. Nice. <laughs> Is it just basically me blowing on the microphone with, like, annoying no, it's, noise it's, in the background? No, it kept cutting out, too. It's a very shrill, high-pitched squeal. Oh, no, that was on purpose. That's exactly what I was doing. Yeah, but it didn't... It was worse because of the microphone. That was my point. No, I promise. It sounds exactly like I thought it did. I've whistled on mic before. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't like you, Noah. I want that to be very, very clear. Specifically, I was doing the shitty recorder version. So, like, it was also doubly intentionally bad. I don't like it. I don't like uh, it, and I don't like you. Dan, I'm sure there's plenty of places where you could tell us how much you don't like what I do, though. No. Where are those places? I quit. I'm, I'm going to interrupt this for a second. I think one of my favorite bits is when I just, like, continue singing a song, and you guys just ignore it and keep talking. <laughs> I, I don't do know why, enjoy I just that. love it. It's so it funny. It's very me. funny. See, it's one of those things that I don't always and notice you're doing it. It happens weirdly until high editing. amount of times. And then I'm like, listen, I'm like, Jackson's just, he's just singing a song. <laughs> he's just still yeah, singing I'll a like song. two minutes sometimes. <laughs> I'll just keep going. You'll just be singing quietly to yourself and me and Dan will be out here like <laughs> arguing about something like just really stupid. And then you're over here like, He's right. I do that. That is exactly yeah, what Dan, just happened, Dan, yes. Dan, where can they find you? In hell. This is my personal hell. Cool. All right, we'll see you there. If you want to hear me rehash jokes from other people who literally just made them, I'm uh, Bubba Dabad, B-U-B-B-A-D-A-B-A-D, on Twitch, Twitter, Tumblr, and Instagram. I guess most oh, of the times, nice. the only time I like actively, aggressively rehash someone's jokes are on like Twitch. But hey, I'm still or doing on Tumblr. When you take my Tumblr blogs, and <laughs> I'll just blog start them. screenshotting everything you share Honestly, and posting all right. it, and pretend it's my own, even though it's clearly a screenshot of something that you shared. I don't hate that you know as what? an idea. Are you kidding me? That's terrible. <laughs> okay, well, I like it. I'm trying to be supportive of my friends, but you know, fuck me, I guess. I'd rather not. Your loss. Anyway, all right, that's a wrap, boys. Facebook.com/slash off the air. Or that wasn't quite a wrap. We weren't the quite there yet. Yeah, sorry. Twitter.com slash the off the air. Facebook.com slash OTA podcast. Patreon.com. As we in the industry call it, this is what we call a, off the a air. margarita shot. Or a martini margarita. shot, sorry. Martini shot. <laughs> I was going to say, dang, we got margaritas out here. Uh, I mean, if you would like to support us non financially, please give us a review on Apple Podcasts, drop a five star and some comments, and we will read it out loud and talk about what you said. If you give us money to give you a shout out, we might aggressively make fun of you like what we did to Cloud last week with the uh, our M&M's candy bars. Something she probably realistically never thought anyone would see. So, no, I feel like you don't post something like that unless you want someone to have a, a, a hot spicy take on it. I don't know. It, I guess it depends. But anyway. It does depend. Thank you very much for uh, listening this week, everybody. We will see you next week. Bye. Bye-bye.